Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. This is another AMA episode, that is, Ask Me Anything. I'd love to answer your questions. If you have a question you think is going to be of broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to victor at victorjm.com. That's victor at victorjm.com. On today's episode, Robin from Ottawa asks, how do you build relationships with high net worth individuals? In your book called Magnetic Capital, this is one of the primary factors you touch upon. Let's say you meet an individual at an event and exchange cards and contact information. What are the next steps? Well, Robin, this is a great question. and It's one that I get frequently. Let's go back to the fundamentals of raising capital that are clearly outlined in my book. If your goal in ultimately developing a relationship with a high net worth family is to raise capital, you've got to obey the five fundamentals. When you have all of these in place, raising money is incredibly easy. And when one or more of these are missing, raising money gets incredibly hard. The five fundamentals are number one, relationship. Number two, trust. Number three, results. Number four, you've got to have a compelling opportunity. And number five, you have to have that perfect alignment between the goals for the money and the goals for your project. If you don't have that, it's not going to work. The main thing to remember about high net worth people is that they are people too. They have different perspectives and perhaps even different values because of their circumstances. They recognize that their most valuable resource is not money, but time. As a result, high net worth people tend to be much more time conscious than the average person. They don't want to develop relationships with people who just want them for money. They don't want to be used any more than anybody else wants to be used. They also don't want to waste time with people who can't help them achieve their mission. High net worth people are slow to develop relationships. They know how to make money. They also know how easy it is to lose money. They know how hard they had to work to make the money the first time, and they don't want to have to go back and do it again. As a result, they're much more focused on safety and preservation of capital. You're going to face a lot of scrutiny and due diligence from high net worth people. These relationships take time to develop, and they do not happen quickly. In terms of how I build these relationships, it comes down to one simple characteristic. I approach high net worth people as peers. Even though we're not peers, I approach them with confidence and with humility, both of those simultaneously. I work quickly to establish rapport with them by showing that I understand their world, but not in a presumptive way. There's a subtle but important distinction. One of the things that helps me in that regard is that I'm incredibly well-traveled. I've been a lot of places in the world, and chances are good that I can start a conversation about somewhere we have both explored, and that's a pretty safe bet. I can talk about the time we came across an extinct volcano next to St. Bart's. The volcano had broken in half, and you could sail right into the crater of the volcano and drop anchor in about 12 feet of water in the middle of the volcano. A short ride in the tender to shore, we came across a small band of billy goats who came ashore the island in a shipwreck. I have dozens of stories like this from all over the world. I also do my research and find out as much as possible about the person before I meet them. We probably know some people in common. For example, one of the Major League Baseball team owners has a strong relationship with an attorney who I know extremely well. Many high net worth families have gatekeepers. These people have family offices whose job it is to manage the family's investments. I attend family office conferences where the money managers for the ultra-wealthy congregate. I find out what their needs are. I find ways to add value. Sometimes it's not monetary. Sometimes it's as simple as making a valuable introduction. For example, a recent conversation with a high net worth person, I came to discover they were doing some marine ecological restoration work. I made the offer to introduce them to the Eric Schmidt Foundation team, who currently have a marine research vessel in the Pacific. I'm good friends with the chief engineer aboard the ship. Sometimes, you never know how someone in your network could add value to a relationship. Then you deliver on the promise and let them know you fulfilled your commitment with a simple, direct update. People who don't have money look at the ultra-wealthy as having it made, as if they don't have a single care in the world. Nothing could be further from the truth. They, too, are constantly learning, evolving, developing, figuring things out. The ultra-wealthy circulate in a community that spills opportunity at every turn. These people are inundated with opportunity, and if they don't focus, they will become time and energy bankrupt to the thousands of inquiries. They have to become very good at saying no. It's simply a matter of survival. The key to breaking through that barrier is to show that you're mindful of their time and energy management challenge. If you have a phone call with them, keep it to 10 or 15 minutes, no more. Communicate in a way that pierces through the noise and gets to the heart of the matter. 
It won't be rude. They will respect you for it. You're speaking their language. But that doesn't mean skipping steps in the relationship building process. That's creepy. It means communicating in a clear, concise, and insightful way. Robin, I want to thank you for a great question. I hope some of these tips are helpful for you in terms of how to develop relationships with high net worth people. We could talk about this really at length for much more than five minutes, but hopefully these five minutes give you a little bit of insight. For the rest of you, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.